Welcome back to Think Tech. This is Global Connections, and we're talking about, um, of course, the attack on Israel. And the question before the House, the question before Rabbi Itchel Krasinjansky, who is the rabbi of Chabad here in Hawaii, is how do religious Jews feel about the attack? And how does that affect Jews around the world? Because Rabbi Krasinjansky is connected with Jews around the world. Welcome to the show, Mitchell. Thank you, Jay, for inviting me on the show. And uh, it's unfortunate that it's a tragedy like this that uh, has us talking. Um, in answer to uh, the title of the show, how do how do religious Jews how are they how are they reacting to this uh, to this uh, to the war to the tragedy of the massacre of uh, innocent uh, hundreds and hundreds of innocent uh, uh, Jews who were killed in the most horrific way as as, as the whole world has uh, seen in the last couple of days. Um, if the if the title is meant to ask, you know, theologically, how do we, uh, you know, understand it, you know, theologically, how is it possible, and how does God allow for something like this to happen? Uh, so, if that's the question, then uh, if the question is why, there are no answers. If the question is what do we, you know, you know well, how do we approach this? Or how do we deal with this? Then uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of discussion that we can have. Um, you know, rather than discuss it from the books, you know, how it's explained in the books, in the Torah, uh, I'd rather refer to what's happening around the world, uh, specifically the Jewish world that I know and all those who are who love who love Israel and the Jewish people. We're seeing something very, very um, amazing. As dark and as evil as Hamas is and their acts and actions, killings, to that extent, on the very opposite of the spectrum, we're seeing unbelievable outpouring of 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 light and love and um, and and unity amongst the Jewish people in Israel all around the world and um, I can tell you stories you know I'm, people are sending us clips all the time there was a man standing in JFK airport in, in, in John F. Kennedy Airport in New York. He went over to the El Al, uh, uh, El Al uh, counter, and there was a whole bunch of uh, mainly young people who were trying to get onto the flight because they got uh, the call to come up, come back to serve. And he insisted on paying for paying their tickets. He ended up Buying 250 tickets for the 200 for uh, you know for all of them there. He didn't allow himself to be photo uh, photographed. He didn't want all anonymous. This is you know you're doing. He said to them, "You're doing the real work. I'm just doing what I need to do." Um, you know, um, there were, I, I saw a clip of 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 a soldier on the front, who via Zoom uh, uh, watched his son having a bris circumcision. Uh, a bride and groom who immediately after the chuppah, which is the, the, the religious ceremony of the wedding, <clears throat> left, the groom left, put on his uh, soldier's uniform and, and, and drove away to fight. Um, realtors are putting up ads all over the place in Israel, begging anyone from the South who's lost their home 
and the homes have been bombed and everything to please come to the apartments that they have so they can live there and move in there for free. Restaurants that are not even kosher restaurants are shutting down and turning their kitchens kosher so that the soldiers can, can, can have food, kosher food. I mean, these things are happening. And, and the most heartbreaking thing is young people or many hundreds and hundreds of people are working overnight digging graves so that those who, have, who are murdered should have a proper burial. What's happening is 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 it's hard to wrap our minds around such such hatred and such evil. Who would have believed, you know, that that fifth that uh, that uh, 70, 80 years after the Holocaust that we be, that we that we're facing this kind of pogroms, you know, we grew up at least I grew up thinking that this was history. This was a this was a dark period of our history, but we're living now in a in a civilized world. We're living in you know in a free world, and and for and, and for this to happen on the scale that it happened, it just boggles the mind. It boggles the mind, and something interesting. This is maybe a, a little of a on a religious observation. <clears throat> the last war that took so many lives in Israel broke out on Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. This, this massacre took place on Simchas Torah, the most joyous year, also a very holy day in the Jewish calendar. This wasn't, this Hamas, this, this, this evil, is at war with everything that Judaism teaches us and what Judaism stands for. The Jewish people suffered perhaps more than any other people throughout our long history with, uh, with, with massacres and pogroms and anti-Semitism running throughout our, our, our long history. But yet we are a people that celebrates life, that cherishes life, that does everything to bring life and light and love into the world. The contrast, the contrast is so great between the hatred, the it's a it's a hatred that's it's hard to understand because normal people do things, uh, you know, that help them along the way. These are these animals. They know, they knew the response that would come from Israel and from the Israeli army. They knew that they're going to bring suffering upon themselves and the whole population that they don't really care about, right? But their hatred is so, I, I can't even understand it, so I cannot explain it, that they're ready to, 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 to peril their own, their own lives only to be able to, uh, to, 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 to murder and to kill Jews. It's, it's, it's mind blowing, totally is mind blowing. I, I, you know, there's, a, there's, a, we have a long history, like I said, of 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 anti-Semitism, and Jewish people have suffered and lost a lot, but have always come out, have always come out strong, and rebuilt, and even stronger. There's a principle in in Jewish mysticism. That, that that says that every setback, uh, every descent is for the purpose of a higher ascent. <clears throat> it brings it will bring out something um, uh, stronger and deeper within us. It doesn't explain. It doesn't explain uh, the why, and, and but it 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 gives us the the directives, the direction. That we need to actually um, remind ourselves of who we are and what we're all about. Yes, Israel, thank God, has a strong army, but that's not the strength of the Jewish people. And that's not the strength of Israel. It's really a, a, a spiritual strength. It's it, it's it's a God graced strength that 
in the face of all of this, in the face of, by the way, there was a clip that happened. This is amazing. The, 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 the Hamas terrorists, they broke into this woman's house. She was a grandmother, an elderly lady. And, um, and they were going to take her uh, hostage. But they were just lounging around in her apartment. So she said to them, you know, you, you, you kids look like you're hungry. You have to eat something. And she went to make them a meal. <laughs> and that's what they did. They were eating and they were having a good time and joking, whatever, until the door was banged down with the Israeli uh, uh, soldiers came in and they uh, did what they had to do and saved this woman. <laughs> we're, not, we're not capable of comprehending such evil. It's just very alien. It's a very, very alien. But I think that um, this time it has to be different. It has to be different on, on many fronts. It has to be different for all people who embrace life to be able to clearly see and to clearly speak out to this kind of, 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 of raw evil. There's something very interesting uh, in the Torah. The Torah, but in general, is a uh, is 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 all about peace. Maimonides says that God gave the Torah to the Jewish people to bring peace in the world. So many of the commandments are all about uh, bringing, you know, peace and and, and kindness and the and the ways of Torah are kindness. But there is one commandment in the Torah, which is, you know which is puzzling. And that is, there is, there's, there was a nation called the Amalekites in Hebrew. Um, and the Torah, and they, this nation ambushed the Jewish people when they left Egypt, ancient Egypt, after we were freed by the great miracles that God brought about through Moses. After the Jewish people uh, left Egypt, they were in the desert, this nation, called Amalek, Amalek, A-M-E-L-A-K, ambushed the Jewish people and, uh, and uh, killed many, many Jewish people. And God said in the Torah that the Jewish people have a sacred obligation to fight the nation of Amalek and to annihilate Amalek, to annihilate them. And it seems out of character for the Torah to use such words and and to give such a directive there is a phenomena of raw evil of absolute evil that cannot be ref that cannot be turned around that cannot be elevated that cannot be refined that has to be has to be eliminated and you know we saw that with the nazis with hitler um that that was absolute evil and it had to be destroyed. It had to be uh, vanquished. And we're seeing it. We're seeing that that very same face of evil rear its ugly head. And with God's help, Israel will do what it uh, Israel will do what it has to do to protect itself and protect its citizen and actually protect the world, rid the world of such kind of evil. You mentioned Israel, Rabbi. Are you concerned for Israel? You know, uh, I mean, I'm in the same, same generation uh, you are, and I've assumed that always that Israel was capable of protecting itself. Now, now that question is raised, and um, Mas is trying to show us that Israel is not capable, not as capable as we thought. Are you concerned about the future of the state of Israel? And if so, how concerned are you? So the answer is I'm absolutely have no shred of concern, no, no doubt that Israel will prevail, that Israel will, um, will do what it has to do to protect itself and will survive and continue to thrive. I say that because a, we have this experience, this long history of uh, being beat up, 
by um, forces of evil nations that were actually much stronger and, and much more, we were outnumbered. We're only, a, we're, we're a small nation, but we have the promise in the Torah and the promise of God that uh, the Jewish people will prevail. And it's, it's, it's been true for the last uh, close to 6,000 years, as long as we've been around. So I have no doubt that, that will happen. And I'm not, I'm not even talking about now from, from, from studying and knowing, uh, you know, how strong the Israeli uh, army is, which thank God it is. I'm just talking to you, you know, as a Jew, uh, it's not a matter of faith that I believe that we will survive. I, I just know it as a fact of life. It's been promised in the Torah, in the eternal book given to us by the eternal God, that we, the eternal people, will in fact be eternal and uh, will overcome all the evil that, uh, that we have to overcome. And um, really, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, the role of the Jew, the Jewish people in the world, uh, and this is a quote from the prophets, is to be a light unto the nations, meaning that I, we are the conduits of light. We, we, we uh, received God's word uh, on Mount Sinai, and over over the millennium, we have um, uh, brought that message to the entire world. This, uh, our civilization today is based on the values given to us uh, in the Torah by God. This is who we are, right? Uh, along the way, there's an expression in the Talmud that the sword and the book came down from heaven together, tether together. We know we are we are the people of the book, but we have to lift up our swords in order to be able to overcome those who want to, you know, you know, you know, it says that um, you really want to know who you are. Don't talk to your friends. Listen to what your enemies say. And you'll get a glimpse of, of you know, of, of how they see you. If you look into my comp from Hitler, Hitler's hatred to the Jews was because he believed that the Jews uh, brought down civilization with this whole idea of right and wrong and conscience, uh, conscious. You know, he wanted to rid the world from this from this light that interfered with his, you know, with his dark being. That's who we are. We are messengers of light. We are messengers of light, you know, in, in, in concrete ways and in little ways and big ways. Every day when we wake up in the morning and thank God for giving us another day of life and when we smile to whoever we encounter and we do good, we try to do good. As, we try to be forces of good. That's how we bring light into the world. And Israel has been doing that as a nation and all Jews around the world and all godly people around the world or good people around the world. This is this is our this is our understanding of this gift of life that God has given us. This whole this whole evil and and hatred and anti-Semitism and anti it's not even only anti-Semitism, it's just pure hatred is something that um is very alien to us. You know the the press, um, in my view, has not covered this very well. It focused more on um, the people who have been wounded in Gaza than the people who have been um, murdered and slaughtered and beheaded and raped and marched in naked and, and kidnapped. Um, the press hasn't covered that nearly as much. And uh, this is similar to other you know, other wars with um, Gaza, where they attacked Israel. And uh, I am very concerned that behind that failure, there is um, there is a dark strain in the media. Therefore, that's why I want to talk to you about these things. And 
and examine, you know, what is going on with the two sides of this issue. And I totally agree that there's no justification possible for what Hamas has done. None. You know, think about it as hard as you want. Take their side if you wish. But there's no justification. However, uh, I notice articles in the newspaper about groups on college campuses in this country, about groups that, um, you know, that support um, the, the, the Palestinian cause and therefore Hamas, about groups who are protesting and counter-protesting against those who would stand with Israel. And uh, it is, to me, absolutely maddening to see them there because I, I can't imagine what drives them to protest in favor of obvious murderers. But I wonder what you would, what you think about that and what you would say to them, Rabbi, because they're out there and they're protesting against Israel and in favor of the savagery. That's a very, very important question. The way I see it is, the way I understand it is, that all of life or all of civilization is this um is this uh, age old battle between good and evil dark light and darkness and we are soldiers of light every single one of us you know the you know you asked before you know how jewish people are are um reacting to this but i think that um every person um needs to think about becoming think about mobilizing themselves in this great fight in this great war the soldiers in israel are mobilized in their divisions air land sea medics whatever but each and every one of us each and every person who has a conscience who has a feeling for uh, an understanding of right and wrong and, and, and goodness and kindness as opposed to evil, this is a wake-up call. And this is, is, you know, we need to be mobilized because it's a war that uh, that that is still raging. This is just an, uh, an outbreak of it. But, it, it, you know, it, it un the undercurrents of this is really the battle of life, which is to, that goodness should triumph darkness and every person needs to really decide what you know what is my life you know in what direction is it pointing you know what what is the purpose or the meaning of of, of my life how, you know how you know how am i living my life and and in, in in a situation like this you cannot there's no middle ground you cannot you cannot stand in the middle and and, and indifferent and, and and uninvolved. You're either you're either for the a force for what's right, or you're 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 uh, you're aiding and abetting the forces of evil. And um, and it, it, you know this kind of an upheaval, this kind of a massacre, this kind of a, of a unprovoked war, is really should 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 almost like force upon us that each and every one of us has to ask this question to ourselves. You know, am I a, a part of the, the force of goodness? Or am I just, you know, just going to turn my back and, and as long as it doesn't affect me, I'm not, in, I, you know, I don't care. Now, we, the Jewish people, from, from time immemorial, uh, have been in the words of the prophet, a nation that dwells alone. You know, uh, it's just like as, as, as if, you know, you know, the, the world is indifferent to the plight of the Jewish people to some degree, sometimes more, sometimes less. And it hasn't changed, it hasn't changed over a thousand years. It's a very, it's a very, um, a difficult role to play and a burden. Uh, but it's also uh, the flip side of it is that uh, there is blessing or something positive in this unity 
that uh, manifests itself, especially in times like this, amongst the Jewish people. Uh, you know, um, someone sent a clip that I saw uh, kosher supermarkets around the country that um, uh, that, um, that are nearly empty, like the shelves are empty, because people are buying everything they can and sending it <laughs> to Israel. Yeah. Solidarity. Exactly. Well, um, you know, I, I hope this is over soon, but, um, you know, Netanyahu says it's going to be a long war. And those soldiers you talk about are they're completely courageous and they're willing to they're willing to march into into harm's way they're willing to risk their lives to give their lives and uh you know to me that's a message to all of us we have to take every step we can to support them like that guy who bought the 250 tickets that's right. truly remarkable but I think there will be call, calls for sacrifice going forward. It's not the end of this discussion. Um, it's not the end of this war. Um, and history has, has changed things. History has changed things for the Jewish people, for Israel, for the Middle East, and for the Palestinians and Hamas that would attack Israel. Do you agree with that, that we are in a different place now? Uh, for sure. I mean, um, things cannot go back to uh, the way they were two weeks ago. Um, you know, there's been rumblings or they've been saying, you know, uh, I forget the expression where they say, you know, you pay close attention to your enemies, you know, listen, you know, take them for their word. They've been saying this all along for years that they want to you know destroy the, the zionist enemy and march them into the sea and stuff like that and um yeah and now that they had a chance they planned it and they uh executed and uh, we have to um stop them in their tracks we have to annihilate them and uh yeah it's it's you know when 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 this kind of of darkness uh, presents itself, like I said, I believe it almost obligates us to look deep into ourselves and to see, you know, what are we made of, who we truly are, and how to combat this kind of, of, of evil. I mean, we're not even talking about uh, the realities of, you know, of, of people who uh, lost their homes in Israel and people, especially people living in the South, their homes have uh, been bombed. Uh, I'm not even, can't even imagine families uh, having to deal with, uh, you know, children or spouses or family members who are been taken hostage, you know, and all the horrible things that they're doing. I mean, I, I don't know how they sleep at night. They don't, probably, they definitely don't. It's it's really really horrific, and and when we see this kind of uh, insanity, these, these these kids that are supporting, you know, protesting on behalf of the Palestinians. I mean, the truth of the matter is that the the greatest enemies of the Palestinians are the Palestinians themselves, Hamas itself, you know, who puts this whole society, their whole country, into harm's way. You know, where they embed their 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 their, their, their you know, the military, the rocket facilities, whatever it is, they embed them in homes and underground, you know, homes. They don't care about their people. I mean, it's just mind boggling. It's hard for us to understand that kind of, uh, it's just. An... Well, we're only finding out now, a few days later, and we're going to find out a lot more. Um, we, we, we found out, for example, only today, how deep Iran's involvement was in the planning, the funding, the weaponization of this attack. And we'll find out more about what happened um, in, in Gaza, what happened with Hamas. 
and uh, what happened with other Palestinian groups that contributed and other countries that contributed. It's all going to come out probably within, you know, a fairly short period of time. So um, I would like, I know you have photographs and I know you have a network of people in Israel that you're talking to. And I would like to explore those things going forward with you, Rabbi, where we're only starting our discussion to cover the subject. I'm very happy that you could join me today for this discussion. Um, okay. But I want to I want to repeat it and continue it and follow the news and and what you are learning about you know what is happening inside of Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Jay, for inviting me. Like I said, I just want to say one last thought, and maybe we can explore it further or discuss it further. And that is, Judaism teaches us that the Jewish people are one. Uh, a one a one being just like a human body has many parts to it but it's an organic whole and the health of a person's foot contributes to the health the overall health of the person in the same way also each and every individual member of the jewish people is really uh, intrinsically uh, connected to all jews so therefore, the Rebbe would say, Rabbi Schneerson, and the Rebbe spoke about it uh, during the Yom Kippur War, that any mitzvah or any act of goodness that we do, every individual Jewish person does, actually strengthens the body of the Jewish people and gives uh, might and strength, not just abstract spiritual strength, but actually uh, uh, real uh, there's, there's miracles. Maybe next time we can talk about we've been hearing about unbelievable, miraculous things that have been happening, and uh, they can only point to a higher, a higher power that's looking out for us, and will ensure that, with God's help, we, uh, ensure that we will overcome this uh, this uh, dark period as well. Hodah Rabah. Thank you. And shalom. It means peace. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Be well. Bye.